The peace of the Lord be with you and welcome to this new week, this new Monday's thought for the day and I am somewhere different today. I am in St Hilda's Mission. If you've not been here before, this is St Hilda's Mission. And it's good to be sharing with you today's thought from here. Now, I don't normally like going through the same stuff again and again, but I'm going to go back to the valleys. We've looked at Psalm 23, and we looked at the valley of the shadow of death. Well, today I'm going to look at with you a different valley. It's a valley that's mentioned in Ezekiel, and it's the valley of dry bones. And as I read the passage to you, some of you will burst into song for the well-known song that goes with this. But let me read you a few verses from Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he carried me out by his spirit and put me down in the plain full of bones. He made me go to and fro across them until I had been around them all. They covered the plain, countless numbers of them, and they were very dry. He said to me, Man, can these bones live again? I answered, Only thou knowest that, Lord God. He said to me, Prophesy over these bones, and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord God to these bones. I will put breath into you and you shall live i will fasten sinews on you bring flesh upon you overlay you with skin and put breath in you you shall live and you shall know that i am the lord i began to prophesy as he had bidden me and as i prophesied there was a rustling a sound and the bones fitted themselves together as i looked sinews appeared upon them Flesh covered them, and they were overlaid with skin, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the wind, prophesy, man, and say to it, These are the words of the Lord God. Come, O wind, come from every quarter, and breathe into these slain, that they may come to life. I began to prophesy as he had bidden me. Breath came into them. They came to life, rose to the feet, a mighty host. We looked at when we looked at the psalm. And my first time I looked at the psalm with you, I looked with Julian of Norwich, where it said, all shall be well. We read through Psalm 23 and said, all shall be well. And that's a theme that runs through Psalm 23. For the Ezekiel passage, the theme that runs through it is, you shall live. It's a theme that runs through the valley of dry bones. Mortal, can these bones live? The Lord asked Ezekiel. I suspect it's a question most of us are wondering about. Can we recover from this, from this lockdown, from this COVID-19 that we're dealing with? And if so, when and how and what will happen? And we looked at that a bit last week when we looked about the gates what will the future look like? And Ezekiel's response was an answer that we perhaps should be given rather than surmising. And he says, Oh Lord God, you know. So I myself appreciate his honesty. I appreciate what Ezekiel was saying. I hear his uncertainty. I sense his feeling of powerless. I picture him looking round in shaking his head in disbelief as he's overwhelmed by the enormity of it all. God only knows if these bones can live again. And that's how I feel sometimes when I read the newest numbers of cases, of deaths, of job losses, of financial hardship. And I'm guessing you might feel the same way too. But today we are all like Ezekiel. I know how easy it is to focus on the despair of the number of dry bones. But I also know that it is not the final story of God and God's people. 
So I want to give you some other numbers to focus on. And it's just two numbers. Number 10 and number 3. 10 times God promised to do something about the dry bones. Even to the point of repeating himself. He said, I will cause breath to enter you. I will lay sinews on you. I will cause flesh to come upon you. I will cover you with skin. I will put breath in you. I'm going to open your graves. I'm going to bring you up from your graves. I will bring you back to your land. I will put my spirit within you and I will place you on your own soil. Ten times God promises life and wholeness. Ten times God promises return and a homecoming. Ten times God promises that the dry bones of this valley are not our final reality. And throughout these ten promises, at the beginning and the middle and the end, God says these words, and you shall live. You shall live. It's the river of reassurance that flows through the valley of dry bones. You shall live. And God says it three times. And you shall live. And you shall live. And you shall live. See, these promises of reassurance are the path we walk in this valley. The next time you read the numbers in the news, or the next time you get scared or frightened, the next time you feel anxious or maybe overwhelmed, remember those numbers, 10 and 3. Remember God's promises. Remember God's reassurance. And then listen carefully to the Spirit within you. And listen for the rattle, the rattling of bones coming together, bone to its bone. That rattling sounds like faith. That rattling, it sounds like hope. That rattling, it sounds like love. It sounds like courage and a refusal to be ruled by fear. It sounds like the people praying Psalm 23, and it is well with my soul. It sounds like the church bells ringing out in remembrance. It sounds like the helping of the, of the pastoral team and each individual of a member of our church and our parishes who will help those who have lost their jobs. It sounds like patience. It sounds like gentleness and compassion for others and for ourselves. That rattling of dry bones, it sounds like the support and the care from the healthcare providers to the police, to the frontline workers, to the home carers. When you clap on Thursday night, it sounds like the rattling of bones. Things are coming alive and we shall live. It sounds like people are asking, are you okay? That rattling sounds like people are asking, do you need anything? It sounds like people smiling and laughing as they connect on Zoom. It sounds like a text message going through to somebody's phone saying, all shall be well. It sounds like an openness to the future. It sounds like life, and like we talked about last week, life abundant. So let's rattle this valley. Let's rattle this valley like it's never been rattled before. And remember the ten promises of God. And the three. And you shall live. So let's live abundantly and victoriously. Amen. In a moment we're going to come to a time of prayer and hopefully you've had your email through with those upon the prayer list we will pray for those so let's just come to a time together heavenly father we thank you for your goodness and your mercy that you pour out to us help us to rely on you and upon your promises 
Help us to understand your promises in a deeper way by reading and engaging with your word. That the promises you gave us within the Bible might come living stones to us. They might have sinew upon our prayers. That life may be breathed back into our, our spirits. That we may be living again for you. Help us to realise that we shall live. We pray for our schools as they go through the process of looking at reopening. We pray for the teachers and the governors who are making these decisions as well as for the council. We pray for the families who are in that two minds where they send their children back to school. We pray for our schools in the parish. We pray for our Church of England schools, St. Thomas's and St. James's. But we pray for the other schools connected with us as well. May wisdom be sought. And let us live in hope and joy and hear the rattling of dry bones as things start to come together again and you breathe life into all of us, like spring, as we look outside our window. So bless each one of us this day as we do our things, whatever that might be. Keep us enveloped in your love, in the reassurance that you are with us, in the desire to know you more deeper and more clearer by reading your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. Amen. Well, there's a few things going on this week that you need to um, make a note in your diary, be aware of. Obviously, 9.30 every morning, we will continue with our Zoom meetings, our Zoom prayer meeting. And then this week on Tuesday, we'll have songs of praise at 7 to 7.30 with new songs um, and some old songs. We had uh, a couple of hymns last week thrown in. Each of them will have the words with them so you can sit in and either join along by singing at home or just be ministered to by the words. And this week after we've done the... Um, songs of praise we will have a quiz night so to raise money so come along joining with that bit of family fun it should be a good night Wednesday we have our Bible study night Thursday we'll have our coffee morning at 11 o'clock and then for the weekend we've got something special coming on as well hopefully you should all receive by now your prayer diaries for the thy kingdom come which look a bit like that you should have those sent through to you also, Christine and myself have put together um, what we call our third prayer booklet, which looks a bit like that. And that's to help you join Thy Kingdom Come time from Ascension Thursday through to Pentecost Sunday. We'll also put together a 24-hour day of prayer from the Saturday before Pentecost, from 8 o'clock Saturday morning, all the way through to 8 o'clock on Sunday morning. If you haven't put your name down yet, please do. Please contact me either through the WhatsApp group um, on the newsletter. It's got my email address and it's got my telephone number. Give me a call and I'll let you know what slots are still available. Um, idealistically, we'd like every slot to be filled. Then if every slot is filled, then obviously we, people can just pair up um, in from their own homes. You don't need to log on to Zoom or anything. It is just purely praying from your own home for the parish and for people within the parish that we know. So have a wonderful week. Um, look forward to catching up with you again soon. And may the peace of the Lord be with each one of you. Amen.